Hi, this is Daryl from Cine Texture, and this is a quick video about using editor scripting specifically for use with Sequencer. So you might have a bunch of mocap or camera takes or properties that you might want to edit on mass. And that can be traditionally quite painful to do if you're editing keyframes directly. So I've got a few examples here. I've got some mocap, very simple uh, animation playing on this camera here. I've actually got two sequences which are identical. And you'll notice that the values are moving largely around zero, except for the X axis, which is offset by uh, one meter, so 100 centimeters. So traditionally, what you could do is grab all of these frames, go into the curve editor, make some changes. Um, but it's a little bit laborious to do that. It's very hard to do it on mass and it's prone to user error. So it can be a good option to use sequencer scripting so you can automate some of these processes. So I've got a utility on here which I've already created and how that works from a user point of view is you can select some assets in the content browser, you can right click and you can create some scripted actions. So I've got some that I've already made. So here I've got transform X plus a hundred. So that's going to loop through both selected sequences and it's going to edit all of these keyframes and add a hundred to them. So if I scrub now, you can see they've all updated. This is now moving around zero, 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 which is great. And it's done that on both files. Something else you might want to do, for example, is batch edit another property. It could be anything like focal length, for example. So if we look here, the current focal length is 40 and I've made an action here to change the focal length to something like 20. So this means you can very quickly make changes and you can also save programmatically as well. So it can be a really useful time saver. So how do we make use of editor scripting? Well, first of all, we go up to edit here and it's in plugins. Let's type scripting. And the two that you're going to need to enable is the editor scripting utilities, which is the basic one. And we're also going to enable this one called sequencer scripting, which is an extension for the scripting utilities, which gives a little bit more functionality specifically when you're working with level sequences and things of that type. So first of all, we're going to right click and we're going to go to editor utilities. And there's two options. This one here is if you want to make a GUI or like front end widget for your action. But in this case, we're just going to utilize a simple right click from the content browser. So we can just go for the editor utility blueprint and you're going to get a bunch of options for a parent class. We're just going to use the asset action utility because we just want to perform our blueprint action on a specific asset within the content browser. So we can just go for this one and let's give it a name. And if we open this up, the way it works essentially for it to appear in the menu is we need a custom event. So if we create a custom event, let me call it print and compile and save. You'll notice this won't actually appear if we right click and go to scripted actions. See, it's not added to the list and that's because we need to have call in editor enabled. So I'm going to enable it here. Make sure you have the custom event selected, compile and save. And now we right click and it will be added to our scripted actions. So to test this is working, let's just put down a print and this should print hello. So compile and save. It's useful when you're developing these to have your output log open. I've got it docked up here. I'm going to clear this and just run that scripted action. And we can see it's printing my hello. So when working with these, often what you're going to do is have multiple assets selected. So we can drop down a function called get selected assets. And this is going to return an array because you might have more than one asset. Let's put a four each down. And then we're just going to print whatever it's found. So let's grab the element and plug it into the string and it's going to return uh, an object reference. And we need to transform this to a display name so we can actually see what it is. So if we run this again, you'll notice if I run it on two assets, it's going to print the name of both of those selected sequences. So that's all you have to do really to get that working. So here you can go through and add lots of functionality, whatever you want to do, either controlling things in the editor or manipulating assets, things like that. So that's the basic idea. Let's look at a real example of how you might use editor scripting to manipulate keyframes. The first thing to mention is it's a lot more involved than you might think. And that's because to get down to the key level, we've actually got a bunch of things that we need to loop through. And that's because we have multiple assets selected in the content browser. We might have multiple bindings, then we've got multiple tracks, we've got lots of different properties within them. And we've also got a thing called sections. So this one has an infinite section, which is this green area in the background. If I add another section, you can have multiple ones of these within a track. So this is a section here that might have its own keyframes in it. 
and you might have another section here that has a bunch of other keyframes in. So we need to loop through all of these things in order to get down to the actual batch of keys that we want to edit. So this is some quite generic code that's just going to loop through absolutely everything and anything that matches our selected property, it's going to add 100 to them. Um, so if you're doing something a little bit more specific, maybe you can cut this down. The idea is I've created two custom events here, which provide two entry points into a single block of code. The only difference being is that we set a different variable value on this entry point. So if I select the custom event, transform X plus 100, we set our add amount variable to 100 and the minus 100 sets that to minus 100. And then we can just reference that value later on. First of all, we've got our selected assets as before. So we have our outer loop. So once this is finished, once we've looped through both the sequences and done all of our processing, I'm just going to save the loaded assets. So the actual code itself, what we want to do is make sure that we're only performing our action on a level sequence. This is a little bit of housekeeping. Essentially, we get our object reference that we've got selected and check the class. And if this is equal to a level sequence, then we execute the rest of our code. So nothing happens if we don't have level sequences selected. So if you're going to perform this action on something else, maybe you're going to perform this on a different class, like a template animation sequence. You change that there. So then we do our main bit of diving to get down to the keys. First thing we need to do is cast to a level sequence. So that allows us to get the bindings. Then we need to get all of the tracks. We're going to get all of the sections and then we're going to get all of the channels in there. In most cases, you're only going to have one of these things. So the loop's only going to run once, but just in case that there are multiple sections, for example, it's going to loop over all of those. So we've got a number of channels. These are things like the location XYZ, rotation XYZ. And we want to make sure that we're only modifying the selected channel. So I've got a variable here called property to adjust, which is probably better named as channel to adjust, but property makes more sense to me. And we're checking the channel name returned equals the same as the selected property. How do we get this value? Well, if I put print here and then print the output of this for each loop, it's going to get our display names. And I'm just going to print this here. So let's compile and save this. And then go to the output log. And then one of my sequences, I'm going to run that action. And you can see here it's printed all of the display names for the channel names that are found. You can see here we've got location XYZ, we've got the rotation, and we've also got the scale as well. So I'm using this to isolate the exact channel name that we want to edit. So we don't want to add 100 to everything, it's just the X in this case. So what we're doing is checking that our channel name equals the property that we've specified, which is location.x. And if that is true, we continue. And then finally, we can get down to editing our actual keys. In order to do that, we cast a movie scene scripting float channel, and this is going to return an array of all the keys that we want to modify. So this array, we need to step through every single one of those keys, and we want to add a value to them. So in a for each, we then cast to the movie scene scripting float key in order for us to get the value of those keys. And we just add or add amount to each one of those and then set the value. So this is obviously a fairly generic piece of code. It's going to go through and for every section, every track that has a location X channel name, it's going to add this add amount to them. But if you're doing something more specific, maybe you could cut this down a fair bit. But this is the basic idea. So once we have that final code, we now have the ability to run these events. So I can do the plus 100 and I can run it again and it's going to instantly update and it's also going to save as well. So it's a bit of a pain to set up the first time, but once you've done it, it's easy to save this on your hard drive as a little utility and then just make simple modifications to your actual use case. So if you want to set a default track property, so something that doesn't have keys, you can use the movie scene scripting float channel again, and then you can just use set default off that without needing to loop over any keyframes. So that's the basics of getting started using editor scripting in Unreal. Remember, you can also use the widget version, which allows you to build a front end, almost like customizing the engine without having to do any engine source code modifications. So if there are a bunch of repetitive tasks or actions that you want to perform, you can do that via editor scripting as well. So this example, I've got a tool that allows me to quickly audition different lens presets, and I can just dock that above the viewport. So scripting isn't just for sequence of things. You can also automate a lot of the properties within the editor itself. So hopefully that was useful. If you're interested in cinematics, filmmaking and Unreal, feel free to subscribe to the channel or send me an email at daryl at cinetexture.com.